Church, today we are in John chapter 8, and if your Bible looks like mine, you have red letters, you're going to see a lot of them, because in this chapter, Jesus is talking a whole lot about who he is. He is declaring, no bones about it, that he is God in flesh, he's Jesus, and at the end of this chapter, he even says, calls himself the I Am, and the people are so irate at this, they pick up stones to stone him, but he slips away unharmed. And he also tells us in this chapter about what it looks like to really be a disciple. Verse 31 says, if you hold to my teaching, you are really my disciples. Then you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. So again, he's, he's declaring who he is. He's also declaring what it looks like to be a true follower of his. Uh, but I want us to look today uh, for most of our time here in the first 11 verses, a story that for most is probably very familiar to you. And we'll just set it up. I want you just to kind of be a fly on the wall here as we, we go back into this, this scene here. That Jesus is teaching in the temple courts. As was the case uh, most of the time, he's drawn a crowd. He's got a crowd around him and he's teaching. And uh, the Pharisees bring a woman who is caught in adultery and they bring her into this group. And the Bible says that um, they make her stand there. So I, I'm just envisioning this, that... Jesus is seated, he's teaching, and all of a sudden they bring this woman to stand there in her shame because she's been caught in adultery. Um, we know that she literally has been caught, has been seen, so there's no doubts about it. She did commit adultery, and she's brought before Jesus and this group of people. And as verse 6 says, um, the, they were questioning, questioning him as a trap. And this is what they say, um, the law of Moses commanded us to stone such women. Now, what do you say? And so they, they're trying to catch Jesus here, like they often were, in some kind of trap so they would be able to uh, accuse him. And uh, what's interesting is this law, they're actually kind of manipulating it a little bit because the truth is, is this law uh, had two parts to it. One, uh, the, the woman had to be a betrothed virgin, meaning that she was already uh, promised to be married to a, a man. And we don't see that. We don't know that for sure here. Uh, but the second part was that if, if indeed um, she or they were caught in this act, that they actually were to both be stoned, male and female. And so we only see the female here. So uh, they're really not even carrying out the law uh, to the full extent. They're kind of using it to their advantage. And Jesus does something which we all probably have wondered about. He he bends down, the Bible says, and he begins to draw right in, into the, the ground there. Uh, into the dirt, and wouldn't we love to know exactly what he was saying? We don't know, uh, but he, he stood down for a minute, and the Bible says they continued to question him. So there he is. He's doing his thing, and I, I imagine, again, fly on the wall situation. They're just, Jesus, hey, you heard what we said. You see her. There she is right there. Like, what are you going to say now? What are you going to do? What, what, what's the word, Jesus? They're continuing on and on, and Jesus straightens up, and he says what we've probably said many times in our life and thought about he says let any one of you who is without sin go ahead and be the first to throw a stone at her so he's basically saying are any of you perfect any of you ever messed up before uh, because if you have then i don't think you have the right to judge her and i i again just just really put myself in this scene here i think about what happens next it says he stoops down, and he begins to write in the ground again, like, what's he writing? We're not sure. And at this time, those who heard began to go away one at a time. They didn't all just run away. I, I kind of imagine them just sitting there thinking about those words, and maybe they began to feel some guilt and shame in their own life. And one by one, they realized they truly didn't have a case and that he had spoken truth. They left. Now you just see Jesus and this woman and I can only imagine what this woman's state was at this time because she literally thought her life was about to be taken in a very brutal way. And she also knew that she had messed up. She was caught in adultery. And Jesus asked her the question. He says, where, did, where are they now? Where did they go? Where did your accusers go? And uh, she says, they're not here. There's no one left. And Jesus says, then neither do I condemn you Go now and leave your life of sin. Now, here's the question. Was Jesus saying what she did was right? Absolutely not. He was not condoning the fact that she had sinned. 
but Jesus was showing her mercy and grace and he was saying go and 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 have a changed life and that's how he is with us uh, he, you know obviously he does not like the fact that we mess up but as humans we do and we do sin um, and he still shows us such mercy and grace that we do not deserve and so I think today um, just rest in that today rest in the grace of God today um, and also be reminded it's so easy for us as humans to judge others be reminded of this to just allow God to be judged and rest in his grace and his mercy